Okay, we're back for part two of the Pickaboo Swirl Wine Glass. And this morning we um, painted the tumbler that we're going to be swirling. And what we did was, just to recap really quickly, we put the vinyl decals on the outside of the glass. We painted it with um, Rust-Oleum two times cover, um, spray paint, whatever color you like. And then we came back with a just a little coat of white. And it doesn't matter if you use uh, gloss, semi-gloss, or matte. It's, it's your personal choice. So um, before we start, I'm going to show you a couple of different things you can use to color your epoxy. Um, I didn't mix my epoxy yet because we know how quickly that sets up. This one has um, the Illumidust. And it gives a nice little sheen, like a pearly look to it. That's not the color, but that's what it is. And you can get that at the Illumilite website. Uh, you can also use this actually, the base, the white, has a drop of the Illumilite dye. I'm not sure which way the video is going to go, so I'm going to hold it a couple different ways to make sure you can see it. My phone is very unpredictable with that. And so I put a drop of Illumilite dye, and then I put this Slice of the Moon Sparkle Pearl. And it's a very nice, I believe this is mica. And a little does go a long way. It's very... Um, very fine and chunky it floats so this is a neat product you can also use um, acrylic paint and that gives you a different look a more opaque look I did put a lot of paint in this I wasn't sure if it was going to cure but it's fine it's not you can't scratch it and the lid or the rim is um, very well sealed if you prefer glitter you can glitter your tumbler. This one does not have epoxy on it. It um, has, I did put a clear coat on it, but it's just clear spray paint. Um, this is epoxy glitter method. So I put the seeds inside, well, the seeds on the outside, then I just glittered over it. Um, once that was cured, I did put a coat of epoxy. And there was some roughness because I used a Lumalite. And one coat of Illumilite, for me, personally, doesn't do the trick over glitter. So I did sand it, put some decals on it, and sprayed it. Um, this one has this only. And that is this color. And that's Illumilite, uh, Illumidust. All right, so... Let's get started. Today I think I'm going to do, since this is purple inside, I think I'll do a purple swirl and a neon pink swirl. Move these items. We need this one. All right. So, what I'm going to do first is go ahead and mix the epoxy. And again, I didn't want to um, mix it beforehand because I didn't want it to get away from me. From me. And on this um, particular method, I use the Illumilite simply because it's um, running. It's not as thick as FX or Permarine, and it stays running longer, which gives you um, more opportunity for that swirl to. Um, generate. You can, if you're new, um, I'm going to post this in a few different groups, some beginner groups and some more advanced groups. So if it's too elementary, then just bear with me. Um, you can get that at the Illumilite website or I prefer to go to Michael's and get the larger size. They have a spout and it makes pouring really easy. So I just use the 40% coupon. It's cheaper to get these than it is to get it you know from the website of course because you get the 
coupon. Only me like does run um, specials once in a while and offers coupon codes, which is quite generous. So um, that's what I use for these. So with that said, we're going to mix it up. And I pulled out um, six drams of each. I was using one ounce of each, but I, it was way too much. So, my Lumilite is one to one ratio, so you want to try and keep it as close as you can. So, I try to get as much as I can out. It seems like if you're going to be slightly over on one part, um, the runnier of the two parts um, is the one that you want to be over on not the other one. If you're over on the other one, your cup's not going to cure. So, but you really do want to try and keep it equal parts. Okay. And I'm going to keep some paper towels handy. And of course, when working with epoxy, you want to wear gloves because it is a chemical and some people are having reactions. Some people are just allergic to it or um, maybe they've never been allergic to it and they've been working with it for months and suddenly they're developing reactions. So you just wanna be safe. So try to keep covered up. Um, it's also suggested that you use a mask and I have a respirator mask that I got from Amazon but I should, but I don't wear that. So, you're just going to mix your epoxy. Normally, you would not mix epoxy this fast, but we're going to be applying heat to it to help promote the swirl. So, you don't have to be extra delicate with your stirring. And when you're stirring it, you want to make sure you get your sides and your bottom. To make sure that um, both parts are getting mixed in. And you're going to wipe your stick. Just to make sure you're getting all that um, mixed together. Alright. So when it looks like it's not swirly anymore inside. You know that it's okay. It's kind of hard to see in this white cup, but it looks like it's mixed together. Whenever I think it's mixed, I go ahead and mix it for another minute just to be sure. And again, I'm wiping my stick and my sides often. Oops, I keep getting out of frame. Sorry, guys. All right. Now that that's mixed, we're going to pull, um, I use these little medicine cups. You can get them from Amazon or Allegra Medical Supply. Allegra, if you sign up for their emails, they'll send you notices whenever they're having sales. Sometimes they'll do free shipping, um, percent off or, you know, various sales. So I use two of these. And I just pour a bit in each one. Maybe about a half ounce. Maybe not quite that much because you want to make sure you have enough to coat your tumbler. Probably not a half ounce because you want to make sure you have enough to coat your tumbler and you might need some of the white to tone down the color if you get a little crazy with your color. All right, so I'm going to use some neon pink. Just a little bit will go a long way. We're just going to put a little drop in there. And see how that looks. Just want to mix it well. Now, um, a 
acrylic paint is not made um, for epoxy. So this could possibly uh, mess up your cure time or your curing period. It could not cure. So you don't want to go really super crazy with the amount of paint that you're putting in there. But just start with a little and see if it has the opaque consistency that you're looking for. And um, you can always add a little more. Okay, so for this one, I haven't opened this one, sorry. We're going to have purple. This is um, metallic purple, and I just got these cheap artist loft um, paints from Michaels, and they were recently on sale for $2 a piece, and that's a pretty good size. So they're normally 4 bucks, Even at $4, that's not a bad price. And these work just fine. Okay, so we're going to mix this one. And that's a nice purple color, so I think that's going to look really good with this cup. Alright. Thanks for bearing with me while I mix this. I just wanted to make sure that if there are new folks watching, that they understand how to do each step. All right, and if you wanted your um, if you wanted your glitter to have a little bit of extra sparkle, you could add some bling or you know some of this stuff in there. I'm going to actually add some of this stuff in because I kind of like that little sparkle or shimmer. But first, I'm going to add because I want my base coat to be opaque so that it covers. You can see these through your base coat if you don't have a good opaque base coat. So I'm going to try and get that as opaque as I can. This is made for epoxy, so it should not affect your cure time. And I'm pretty generous with this. I get, um, I ordered several bottles of this because I use it a lot. We're going to mix it up. I did notice the other night when I put acrylic paint, the white acrylic paint in this, it set up very quickly. I'm not sure if it had something to do with the color. Um, I'm not, I'm just, I can't say, but it did set up really fast. So this is still very fluid, as you can see. It looks fairly opaque, so we're going to just go ahead and put a little bit of this in each container and give it another quick mix. See how, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick that up, but it's really pretty. Very soft looking. And you can probably see it floating around. It's, it just takes off. Um, be careful how much you put. I hope I did not put too much in there on the, on the smaller ones. Um, that will thicken your epoxy just a bit. That and glitter will kind of thicken up. Can you see it flying around? Little sparkles everywhere. That's probably not too healthy to breathe either. Okay, we're gonna get the scrape the stick so you don't have any big clumps. And again, you would not mix epoxy this quickly on a normal basis, but 
because we're applying heat, um, those bubbles will pop. Moving into our pink. On the first video, I was out of frame a little bit, so I'm trying hard to keep an eye on that. And you'll see a little bit of a texture when you're putting it on, but it's okay because your final coat of a, or actually the swirling process will um, help take care of that. So we have our purple. And now if you pick colors that you really just don't like, go ahead and let it cure um, for several hours until it's not sticky to the touch. And then you can just grab the rim of it and pull back on it and it'll peel right off. But once it's cured, it um, seems to be very secure on there, like it, it's gonna be fine. Okay, so now that our epoxy is mixed, I'm gonna move it so I don't accidentally dump it. And make sure I don't have any stuff on my hands. To put the cup on the tumbler, I just use a pool noodle and I tend to make them lar larger than I need them to be so that I have room to hold on to them if I want to take them off. So you can cut it shorter if you want, if you know you're not going to want to take it off. But I tend to um, take these off once that I know they're not moving anymore and hang them on a, um, a paper towel, just a metal paper towel rack. I'm not sure if you can see this. I don't want to hit it. But just one of those metal paper towel racks. And I just let it um, dry the rest of the way. Or cure the rest of the way. So that's another reason I do it. Now I put electrical tape on it to kind of compress it in the center. Because I don't want the um, pool noodle to bulge over the rim. Because if it does, that epoxy is going to stick to it. So this works really well for me. So what you're going to do is just kind of put it in there. And I usually put it against, I get it started. And it takes a little bit of wrestling. And if you kind of push and twist, it goes in. And then I put it against my chest and push it. Now you have to be careful because sometimes you'll have a little bit of epoxy on there from maybe where you used it before. And it will scratch your paint off. And if it scratches the base color that's the very first color you sprayed, you're going to be able to see that. So just try to be careful. All right, so now when we put it on, our spinner is going to be a little tight. And hopefully I won't crush this glass in my hand because I did do this one tighter than I normally do. But just get it on. Good Lord. I really had that thing compressed. And I try to put it on until I know it's at the end. But that seems to be good. And you want to take a look at it and make sure that it's going to be fairly level. And it looks like that one is doing okay. So we'll go ahead and move forward. For this step, I just go ahead and give my base coat one more little stir. And then I'll save the popsicle stick because I'm going to use it again in a moment. And then you just put it on. I used my um, finger. That works well for me. If you have another method, then um, you know do what works best for you. I always encourage people to look at different tutorials to get ideas of how things are done by others and adapt that to maybe something you've seen somebody else do and just come up with a method that works best for you. Alright, so this just takes a moment. And you want to try to go pretty easy on the bottom. If it's too much where it's going to bulge on the bottom, then your cup won't sit level. And 
and again you're going to feel the texture if you use that mica um, it's okay though it's not going to affect the outcome just want to make sure you get your edges when I get to the top I just kind of let my finger run off the end Sorry, my turner sounds like um, chitty chitty bang bang. It's struggling over here. All right. I'm not going to pause the video during this step just because I don't want to get the epoxy on my phone. So if you can bear with me, you can always fast forward if you want. I tend to rush myself when I do these tutorials and that ends up um, with issues. And a lot of times they mess up. So I'm going to just take my time and if you don't want to see any parts of it, just um, fast forward through until you get to the part that you want to know. Okay, so now I'm at the, the top part. I've worked, worked it around pretty good, and I'm just making sure I get that little lip. And there, it's like a little raised area, so that helps to contain the epoxy a little bit. It's not a very big lip, so it will spill over. Right, we're almost there. And again, this is just how I do it. Um, you can do it whatever way works best for you. There's no right or wrong way, really. I mean, it's whatever you're most comfortable with and whatever gives you the best results. So, make sure you have your edge here. I saw one little spot that I wanted to put a little bit more on, and then we're going to go to the next part. I'm just kind of touching it up here. There it is. Just kind of touching it up there to get that coated. And it looks good. Okay. Now you can see some ripples and lumpy bumpies, but they will lay down. Um, epoxy is self-leveling, so it will level itself out. been a little bit of a bun there okay so next thing we're gonna do is start to swirl our colors and as you'll recall the inside of this one is purple so I wanted just a little bit of purple and a little bit of pink. I'm going to really try to control myself with this swirl. I tend to be um, a little crazy with the swirls and want to put too much on, but I want to try to get this one to where it's showing more white than the others. So we're going to see how it goes. So you just put your popsicle stick in and get a little on there and let it drizzle. And there's nothing scientific about it. Um, you don't need to plan where you put it, just let it go. Because as it spins, it's going to have a mind of its own. I let it drip on the edges so that it will run down here. And I usually put a little bit at the rim so it can create a nice swirl up there. 
and the mica looks really nice in here. I'm not sure that the camera's going to pick that up. I think it is right there. It looks really good. Okay. So next we're going to just add a little pink. And this is the fluorescent pink. And I try to do it where there is no purple. The colors will end up meeting together. And as you can see, this is already starting to thicken up. And it's partially because we put that mica in there. But it'll be alright. Doesn't look like much right now. I really love that mica flake. That looks really, really nice in there. Like little crushed diamonds. All right, this is getting um, a little dark on the bottom. So if you don't like how something looks, you can just a little white and let that kind of blend in with it. And if you can see your decal, you can always add a little bit more white. And the white helps to um, make the other colors flow as well. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of white on here wherever I can see the daisies. And if it gets too much, it's okay, because you can turn your spinner off and let it drip down here. And you can use your um, drippings for um, making little jewelry. I don't know how to do that, but I've seen people posting about it. So, there's always something fun you can do with in crafting. Alright, so we're going to get noisy for a moment. I'm going to use the... Um, some people use a heat gun. I would caution you with that. Epoxy, if it's heated too much, will set up like instantly and it ruins your cup. So you want to be careful with how much heat you put on it. When you put heat on epoxy, it's also making um, these vapors or the gases that are coming off of this, it's making it more strong and that can cause, um, I've seen people posting where it has caused chemical burns. So. Just be careful. If it smokes, then you have heated it too much. You need to stop. Don't let it get to the point where you're going to cause this to smoke. And you have to really hold that heat gun on there for a bit of time or hold it too close for it to smoke. I've done it um, many times. So just try to control yourself when it comes to the heat. Alright, so now comes the noisy part. I'm so sorry for the noise. Just want to heat it slightly so it promotes the on flow. And you can see that it's already starting to move. And if there's a big piece that you want to move a little quicker, you can hold it closer for just for a moment. Let it spin for a minute to see how it looks. If there's some places that you really aren't fond of how they look, you can come back in with some more of your color or some more of the white. I really like this pink and purple together. That looks really, really nice. And tomorrow I'll go outside and take a photo so you can get that real color. Another thing you can do 
is you can change the direction that your epoxy is swirling. You can change it slightly by lifting your spinner. And I just have the um, PVC type spinner. I watched the um, Joe Bot video on YouTube. And you do need a, a spinner for this. You don't need it to make other types of cups, but you really do need one, I would think, for this. Because it needs to stay moving. So if you want to try to have it coming down this way a little, just lift it up and it'll flow this way. Let it spin for a couple minutes and then you can tilt it the other way so that the end is pointing downward and it'll go this way. All right, while that's spinning, whoops, you have a little jump. Sometimes it'll jump if it's coming out of your motor. I did loosen the thing that's keeping it tight, so it might do that, but that's okay. I'm not going to let that go on very long. So it's creating a really cool swirl on the bottom. But I can see a little bead right there. So as I put a little bit more epoxy on, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to heat it one more time and let it spin. Then I'm going to turn it off for a moment and hopefully the motor will reverse. That also gives you a cool effect. As you can see, it's starting to look more and more swirly. I think I want a little more purple. That pink is really bright and it's a bit overpowering. You want to keep an eye on your edges to make sure that they're getting coated. You can see a little white coming through. It's okay. Um, you really don't want your spray paint showing that much. And the color will break down as it mixes with the whites. So if you want to darken it, it's okay to put a little bit more in there. And that kind of gives a little bit of variation of color. You'll have a lighter purple and lighter pink. Okay, see how it's swirling right there? That's going to look really cool. And when it comes back around, it's going to pick up more of that purple. So in an hour from now, it won't look anything like this. Whoops, there's a jump. It's going to go through the purple. We'll see what happens. I just intentionally let it spin for a moment before I 